Hey, good Friday morning. I'm Jamie Cooper. This is a live edition of ZNN Today, co-hosted not by Dr. Alan Coleman. He'll be here in just a little bit by soon-to-be new president, talent of ZTV11, no. Cassidy Cooper, who I have thousands of dollars invested in <laughs> currently. You ready? Yeah. All right, hang with me. All right. Rainfall, three inches below normal. It's raining this morning here in Athens. Supposed to quit, as Gloria told you. She'll do the weather again in just a moment at 6.30. So rain's supposed to get out here by, by lunchtime. But at Huntsville Times this morning said even with the rain in the past few weeks, up to two inches of rain predicted from a storm system that could be, uh, hang around through tonight. Madison County's ex exceptional drought con still continues. It has been since June and shows no sign of letting up. However, every little drop helps. Okay, this morning in a local newspaper in Athens, driver charged with DUI now in that accident that happened out on Highway 72 the other day uh, when the, a death in that. So that is a very serious charge. He was charged with DUI. Got this out of the Decatur Daily. It's also in the local paper here in Athens this morning also. But uh, says, the parents of an a Athens high school senior want the Athens school board to consider a more consistent policy punishing students who get in trouble with the law. This kid was kicked off the basketball team. Says here in the paper he was the leading scorer for shoplifting. A 19-year-old makes good grades. He was shoplifting at Walmart. They made a decision that affected his life. She said it was a decision that could break his spirit. She says the principal at Athens High School is the one who removed him. And said it's like being judge and jury. All I can say about Athens High School, it, uh, Chris Boland, the principal, does a wonderful job. Okay, the Chili Challenge is coming up tomorrow. You need to be there. Cassidy, hang on. You will be working it tomorrow. Here are the three judges. Gloria was... Now, look at Robert Reeves' picture. When do y'all think that was taken? It's in black and white, too. Looks like a, a photo from his high school picture, yearbook. The other guy is Tom Luganville. He'll be here. And this guy on the right won. Chris Spann won the first ever limestone uh, chili challenge he, in 1989 with his famous chili. Uh, Luke, Luke and Bill has been on the Bug Show a lot, the Sports Buzz, with uh, Brett and Harold every, every, uh, quite often here on ZTV 11, it's 7 and 11. He is an ESPN scout. All right, robots. Congratulations to Brian Terry and all that bunch. This is out of the Decatur Daily this morning. Cash, you need to get into this. Looks like a red magnet on wheels with a yellow hula hoop for arms. Students uh, from East Limestone High driving this thing around the track. The Rockets robotic team at Limestone Career Technical Center have constructed their fourth machine to compete in the first robotics. It is a worldwide program. So we'll tell you more about that as we progress. I'm sure they'll bring that dude up here. All right, we had video the other day over at uh, Wallace, Wallace State in Hansel. Elkmont girls advanced. They tranced Danville yesterday, 55 to 22. Congratulations on them. Tanner, I think, plays today. The boys and girls both are still alive in the tournament over that way. I know Bob Jones and Sparkman girls play this morning at 9 o'clock to see who goes on down to Birmingham next week. Unfortunately, West Limestone got defeated yesterday. We had them up on the program about a week ago. The uh, deepest West Limestone High Boys basketball team has ever gotten in the Class 3A Northwest Regional Semifinal was yesterday when they got defeated. They, they were beaten by Winfield, who's 25-5. and five. So congratulations to the Limes, West Limestone Wildcats for getting there. They fell to Winfield 58-35. to 35. Here's a picture out of the paper here in Athens. Fans cheer for favorite team during regional tournament games. There it is right there. A lot of stuff going on. So everybody, if you've never been over there, it is a great trip. All right, Russellville. Got beat the other day. They had not lost a game all year. They were 29-0. Now, because this Winona played an ineligible player, they are back in it. So they will be, Russell Boys will play muscle shows in the Class 5A Basketball Northwest Regional Championship Saturday at 1040. So they get to go in because of illegal participation. All right. Cassie, I don't know if you're one of them or not, but if you're looking for old film reels, movie projectors, or popcorn machines, you might be able to get a deal down in Decatur. Now, Gloria bought me a film projector from this man. He died a couple years ago. There's, this is the, the mayor down there, Don Kyle. The city owns this building. Well, when the man passed away, the, they just left the building unattended, I guess. But there's all kind of film reels like this, popcorn machines. He sold to movie theaters across the country. 
They want to get rid of all this stuff in there. They're thinking about putting it on eBay. So if you're looking for old-timey stuff like that that went in movie theaters, you might want to give the city of Decatur a call today. All right. Cassidy, do you know anything about country music? Yeah, a little bit. All right. Have you ever heard the song, Green, Green Grass of Home? <laughs> no, but I heard you talk about it earlier. Have you ever heard the song, D-I-V-O-R-C-E, Charlotte's theme song? Should be yours. <laughs> it's true. Here's another one. I'm going to slap. He stopped loving her today. There's another one. <laughs> How's this going, Frank? Not too good. <laughs> anyway, Curly Putman, 77-year-old legend from Paint Rock Valley, was in the... Don't you have to go somewhere? It was down in Montgomery yesterday. They're naming a road after him. He's from Paint Rock Valley. Had the pleasure of being in Johnny Evans, my friend from Channel 31, and mentor back many years ago interviewing Curly over at his hometown. A uh, resolution adopted by the Alabama legislature yesterday. From Alabama 65, it turns off Highway 72. It's my old, one of my old favorite highways to drive on. And he goes all the way up to, through Paint Rock Valley up to Huntland, Tennessee. has been renamed the Curly Putman Jr. Highway. Even Frank Scrimshire did not know that he did the song D-I-V-O-R-C-E. Charlotte, we need to use that. I thought Loretta Lynn or somebody did that song. He wrote it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he wrote it. Okay, y'all take it outside if y'all going to discuss any more children. <laughs> State wins a big lawsuit. Troy King sued these pharmaceutical companies years ago. Well, Alabama won $215 million yesterday in a Medicaid drug price fraud suit. I can't pronounce any of the uh, pharmaceuticals in it, but anyway, it's in the paper this morning. This week, Sunday night on CBS's 60 Minutes, they're doing a thing on Don Siegelman. What the paper says this morning, Siegelman, it kind of got the screws put to him. I do believe in this, but he's saying here, 60 Minutes will air a segment on Don Siegelman Sunday at 6 p.m. Siegelman got seven years in prison for, uh, I guess, not being on the Republican side. Anyway, they're going to tell you all about it. All right down in Birmingham, they got a mayor called Larry Langford. He just recently got elected. But the Birmingham paper's got a thing. He owed a clothing store in Birmingham $50,000 for clothes. He says it was a dental bill. <laughs> Here's what it says. Federal investigators reviewing Birmingham Mayor Larry Langford's relationship to investment bankers and lobbyists have questioned him about how he paid personal debt including a large amount to clothing store. He says it was for a dental bill to cover his, but actually it was a clothing store from once. I don't spend $50,000 in a lifetime for clothes. I'm still wearing the underwear I got when Gloria was born. <laughs> or maybe you. No I, when, I, when I got divorced from your mother, it's about the only thing I got to keep. Not my problem. You were the problem. <laughs> car drivers, not anybody I know, though, hang on to their cars and trucks longer now because of the increasing price. Now, Cassie, you happen to drive a 1994. Well, you'll continue to drive that through college. <laughs> the medium age of cars on U.S. roads was 9.2 years in 07. 41% of all cars were 11 years or older, 40% the year before. Okay. Here's something that... Y'all need to know about, listen up, marijuana. You don't know anything about it. It's now the biggest source of income for Mexico's drug cartel. Here's what happened. The U.S. government is seeking additional resources to prosecute traffickers of marijuana. The cartels last year earned $8.5 billion, or 61% of their annual estimated income of $13.8 billion from marijuana. Cocaine sales, almost $4 billion, and meth, only $1 billion. All right. You will watch this game Saturday night after you get through working the Chili Challenge tomorrow. Memphis and Tennessee play at 8 o'clock on ESPN, a one-two punch. Hey, my time is up. Thank you for doing the news this morning. No problem. We'll be right back right after this. Y'all hang on.